I am Anil Kumar and in this video we are going to learn how to write equation of a cubic function from the graph. So I will sketch few graphs for you and then we will try to understand how to write equation for these conditions, right? So let me make three to start with. First one I will write, I will show you graph of a parent cubic function which is x cubed. So it'll be kind of like this. So that is the graph of y equals to x cube, right? Now it represents that the graph is always increasing as we move from left to right and it goes from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. At 0 it kinds of bends and then increases, right? So basically the rate of change of x cube, it is always positive but it decreases as we approach from negative infinity to zero and after zero it again increases. But at zero the slope is kind of zero. So it's like very flat. So if you look at very closely then you'll find this kind of like this it should be like this. so the shape at this point is like this so that is kind of enlarged version so at origin you'll find that the curve bends so that the slope becomes zero and then it increases what you also notice here is that if I draw a tangent at any point it is always with positive slope. At origin, x-axis is the slope, right? So we have a zero, it crosses the x-axis at origin, and slope at this point is always zero for a cubic function, okay? Now, that is your parent cubic function. Now, I'll sketch a different graph for it, and then we'll try to figure out the equation of this function. Let me sketch one here itself. That is, we'll translate this horizontally. In that case, if I move this left, and so if I get a cubic function like this, in that case, what is going to be the equation of this function? Let us assume that this point is minus 2 for us. Since it has been translated two units to the left, the function becomes y equals to x plus 2 whole cube. If I place minus 2 here, then minus 2 plus 2 will give me 0 value. So it fits in, correct? So translating left means plus 2. If I would have translated right, it would have been minus 2 here, right? Similarly, if I translate this up and down, we know transformations. We can add and subtract and then get the equation, right? So likewise, we can get transformed equation of our parent function. Now in this video, we will learn what happens when the graph actually crosses x-axis at more than one point, right? So we'll take two different cases here. So let us say we have graph of a cubic function which goes kind of like this. As you can see, it crosses at two different points. And then we'll have one more where it could go like this, right? We could go like this. And, and then move forward, okay. So it is, don't forget, let it be a smooth line like this, okay. So we'll consider these two cases now and try to write down the equation for these cases. Let us assume that this point is minus 4 and this point is plus 2. Now since we have two zeros, this is a linear zero, the graph is crossing in a straight line and this is a quadratic zero, it goes like a parabola. So we can write this equation as y equals to x plus 4, this is taking care of the linear zero, times x minus 2 quadratic so the power should be 2. So that equation
gives us equation of family of graphs which will go through these points and so we write a here so a is any graph right what I'm trying to say is another graph which is going through this could be kind of like this That will also have a similar equation since it has same zeros. But both of them are different graphs. To get equation of this specific graph, we have to look for a point on the graph. So let us say we have this point and this point is at y value of 1. For simplicity, I am taking such numbers. So that means when x is 0, y is 1. This helps to find the value of a. So we'll put y as 1 when x is 0. So that means 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 2 whole square. And that gives us 1 equals to a times 4, 2 square is minus 2 square is 4, 16, right? So from here, we get a equals to 1 over 16. And so we can write down the equation as y equals to 1 over 16, x plus 4 times x minus 2 whole square. So that becomes the equation of the graph which we initially drew with y intercept at 1. So I hope you appreciate and understand that part. Now let us take another cubic function which has not two zeros but three zeros. And let us say these zeros are at minus 5, minus 2 and let us say 1. In that case, what is the equation of this graph? So these are all three linear zeros. We can write this as y equals to a times x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 1, right? So taking care of all three zeros. To find a, we should know a point on the graph. So that is the y-intercept, right? Let us say this point y-intercept is mm, minus 2. 2 for example. Okay, let's make it minus 2. In that case, for x0, y is minus 2. So write minus 2 here, which is equals to a times minus, I mean, x is 0, 0 plus 5, 0 plus 2, and 0 minus 1. Well, we could have taken point anywhere, okay? Now, so we have minus 2 equals to 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 1 is 10, and these two are positive, this is negative, so it is minus 10a, right? So that gives us minus 2 divided by minus 10 is equal to a, which is equal to 1 over 5, and therefore the function is y equals to 1 over 5 x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. That becomes the equation which represents this kind of a cubic function over three different zeros and a given point. Well, in our cases, we considered y-intercept to get the value of a, but it could be any point on the graph, correct? So I'll leave that as an exercise for you and give you one to practice. Okay, so the graph for you is kind of like this. Okay, and let's say these points are minus 4, 1, 3, and the y-intercept is 2 for us. Find the equation of this graph using the techniques which we have learned. Now with this, we'll have some practice test questions so that you can easily find equation of a cubic function from the graph. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.